My name is Eric Newtouch, and I'm the project director for the College Connections Project at the Manhattan Educational Opportunity Center. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps of completing the financial aid forms. It's about 11 steps long, and we'll start with step one. So step one is to go to this web address, fafsa.ed.gov. You'll see a screen that looks like this, and you could click the Start Here green button if you've never completed a FAFSA form before. Once you click that green button, you'll enter your name, your date of birth, and your social security number into a screen that looks like this. Not all the screens that you see while completing the FAFSA are part of this presentation. After entering your name, date of birth, and social, you'll be asked to start the FAFSA. You'll get some instruction screens. And then you'll be asked whether you want to start the FAFSA for the 2014-2015 school year or the 2013-2014 school year. You'll want to make sure to pick the correct year. After that, you'll set up a password. We recommend that you keep track of that password. After you've set up the password and clicked through to some screens, um, you'll get to the FAFSA application. The sections are across the top here. Student demographics, school selection, dependency status, parent demographics, financial information, sign and submit, and confirmation. When you get to the school selection menu, you're going to be asked to input the schools that you'd like your FAFSA information sent to. So as you're inputting the schools, it might be easier to use the CUNY Financial Aid Book to look up the school's codes rather than looking up the schools by name. You want to list every conceivable school that you might attend. You want to make sure that those schools are able to create financial aid packages for you. After you complete the school selection screen, you'll get to the dependency status screen, parent demographics, and then financial information. On the financial information screen, you'll be asked whether you file taxes, plan to file taxes, or will file taxes, or have not uh, filed taxes. If you did not file, indicate that, and the application will progress relatively quickly. If you did file, and it was more than a couple weeks ago, and other circumstances are met, information could be transferred directly from the IRS databases to your FAFSA form. If you're given the opportunity to do that data transfer, we recommend that you say yes to it. When you get to the sign and submit page, um, you'll be asked, if you'd like to sign with an electronic signature called a PIN. A PIN is a four-digit number. If you already have a PIN, you'll be able to enter it. And if not, you could click Apply for PIN, and you'll be taken to the PIN website. There you'll complete some questions and be able to create your four-digit PIN, go back, re-enter it. And to that, before you know it, part seven, um, you've reached the confirmation page and here it says, congratulations, for instance here, Helen, um, the FAFSA has been completed. There's some important information on the confirmation page. Um, first piece of important information is your estimated expected family contribution. That's how much the government thinks that you can contribute towards your education. Um, and then an estimated Pell Grant amount. If your estimated expected family contribution is zero, and the government believes that you have no resources to commit to a college education, you'll be awarded the maximum Pell Grant of 5645 That's money you never have to pay back. We recommend you print this page. But you're not done yet. On the FAFSA page, there's a link to complete your state application. Click that link, um, and you'll be transferred over to the HESC website to complete the TAP form. The TAP form is a lot like the FAFSA form. It goes through even quicker. Eventually, you'll get to the congratulations page on the TAP form. Um, that page does not report an award amount. So this is part 10, and we're just about done. The last thing that we recommend you do is you enter in your estimated expected family contribution and some other data into something called the CUNY Financial Aid Estimator. Should you be planning on attending CUNY, the estimator will indicate to you how much total financial aid you're expected to receive and how that compares to tuition and fees at the college that you're most likely to attend. You may find that you're going to get paid to go to college. After completing the financial aid forms, there's other steps to take. 
but we're going to stop here today. So um, the College Connections Project at the Manhattan Educational Opportunity Center offers free one-on-one -on -one financial aid advising for individuals age 19 and over. We want to thank Ernesto Sims for being our videographer today. Um, please visit our website at meocollegeconnections.org.